question 13a. So what we might do is just work backwards from the result that we want to try to find a strategy for proving it. So what we could do is multiply both sides by 2. And then I might move that over to the left. And let's put it in the middle. So if we can prove that this is non-negative, then we can get back to um, what we wanted to show. So let's think about another way of writing that. That's actually root r minus root s squared, because when you expand that, you get that. So that'll be our starting point, because we know that can't be negative, because it's something squared. So like this would be in your rough working. And then you can just start by stating that fact, because we know that that's true. A square can't be negative, unless it's complex numbers, but we're not working with complex numbers here. And then you just have to walk, work backwards through the steps. Yeah. Right. Now, if you get confused about which coefficient has to do with the, the sum of the roots and which one's the product of the roots and all that, what you can do is just say, um, if it has these roots, then that means that you can factorize it like this. And then look at what coefficients you're going to get when you expand it. So if you want to see the coefficient on the x cubed, because we want to know what the a equals, then just think about all the ways that you could get, um, like you can have x times x times x times the minus 1 on beta, or you can have like minus alpha times x times x times x, just all the different ways that you can get three x's and one of something else. So you're going to get that one with three x's, that one times three x's, that one times the x's, and the minus one on beta as well. And let's also do the c, because we want that one. So we want the coefficient on the x. So we want one x and, you know, that times that times that, for instance. So that would make negative one on alpha beta, 1 on beta, 2 of the negatives will cancel. And then there'll also be, um, so what did I do, that x, so we could do that x with that and that and that, that would make alpha beta 1 on beta, and then we could do that times that times that x times that. And then that times that times that times that x. So that'll be the coefficient on the x, which we know is c. So we could say a equals a will be this, the coefficient on the x cubed. And c will be all of this. We can simplify this because that will cancel with that, that will cancel with that, and those. So we just get and that's the same as a. So that's what we wanted to prove. Part two. I've just pasted part a there so that we know what it's talking about there. 
So we need to find b, which is the coefficient on the x squared. So let's think about what that's going to be when we expand that. So for example, you would have the minus alpha times the minus 1 on alpha times that x times that x. The negatives will cancel. You get alpha times 1 on alpha times x squared. So that'll be one of the terms. Uh, then you also have that one times that one, 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 and that one times that one. Okay, so that is B. And we could simplify this a bit because those will cancel. And that will cancel with that. So let's rearrange this a little. We can simplify the ones to make two. And then let's put those together because they look similar. Now we got to think how we can use this inequality to show that that's true. Well, I don't see any r plus s on 2 in this, but there there is stuff added together. So maybe what we should do is rearrange this so that it's like that. And then, so for example, we could say alpha beta plus 1 on alpha beta. That's going to be greater than or equal to 2 root alpha beta, 1 on alpha beta. Um, and then that just cancels with that, so that's 1. So we know that that is greater than or equal to 2. Okay, that's good. And then we could do the same thing with this one. And then that cancels with that, and that cancels with that, so that's 1, so that's just 2. Um, okay, and then you can just say therefore b greater than or equal to, so we've got the 2 there, we know that that's greater than or equal to 2, and we know that that is greater than or equal to 2. Um, so there's, there's our proof. Part C. Okay, let's just plug that acceleration into there. Now there's a couple ways you could go from here. The way that I did it is a bit different from how the marking guide did it. I'll just show you my way first and then you can decide which one you like the best. So what I did was I sort of solved this for dx. So I want to multiply both sides by the dx and divide by all of that. And that gives you dx is v over minus g minus kv squared dv. And then what I did was I integrated both sides. So you can just stick an integral out the front. And I decided to make it a definite integral. So I did integral from 0 to h, because then this is going to be equal to h. And we just need to decide what v equals when x is 0 and h. So when x is 0, that would be the initial velocity, which was this, half root g over k. So let's stick that in there. And then when x is h, because this is the maximum height, that will be when v equals 0. So we just need to evaluate this. And actually what I might do is, is take these negatives out the front there. And that will become plus that'll make it just a little bit simpler. So the way they did it in the marking guide was that um, they said dx by dv is v over minus g minus kv squared. So they've just rearranged that equation. And then they said x is the, the integral of this. But they did it as an indefinite integral. 
so they had you know whatever plus c and then they used the initial conditions to solve for c and then plug that back in to work out h um, the way that i've done it here sort of encapsulates all of that just into this definite integral so i think it's simpler this way but whichever way is fine if you prefer that way you can do it that way okay so we're going to work out how to integrate this um, on your formula sheet you will see this so if you forget how to do that it's this sort of thing where you've got a function on the bottom and then the derivative of this is 2kv which is just a multiple of this so that means we can we can use this so you will get ln of g plus kv squared but then we have to compensate for the fact that the derivative of this is actually 2kv on g plus kv squared instead of just being v on g plus kv squared so we have to divide this by 2k to get rid of that uh, I wouldn't actually write that in your solution that's just in your head or in your rough working so we've got that from half root g on k up to zero and then we just need to plug these values in so when v equals zero that's just g Oh, and you might be wondering why there's absolute values here, but I haven't put them in here. Well, I just left them out because this is always positive, because they said that k was a positive constant, so, and that's a positive, and that's positive, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, okay, so that's the zero, and then when v equals that, the v squared will be a quarter g over k, and then k times that, um, the k's will cancel, and you get a quarter g. So this bit is a quarter g. And then g plus a quarter g will be 5 over 4g. All right, and then let's just put this all over the 2k and bring the negative in. So it's going to be negative ln g plus that. So let's just put that around the other way. Oops, g minus ln g. And then we can use the log laws to simplify this. So that'll be ln of this divided by that. So that'll just make ln 5 over 4, because the g's will cancel. And then that's pretty much it. We could write it the same way. Oh yeah, and that this is the same as h. So we could just read, if you want to put it in the same format as they did. That's just the same as that ln is the same as log base e. So that's it. Part D. So the idea with this one is that the volume is going to be um, the sum of all these little slices, where the volume of each slice is the area of the triangle times that will change in x. So it'll be integral of the area of the triangle times dx, where x runs from 0 up to 4. So it'll be like that, but we've got to work out the area of the triangles. So the way that I would do that is I would just think um, the base of this smallest triangle is 2 and the height is 1. And then when we get over here where x equals 4, the base is 6, 3 plus 3 and the height is 2, and this is going to be like a linear relationship. So x is running from 0 to 4, the base goes from 2 there up to 6, and the height goes from 1 up to 2. So you've probably seen these kinds of questions in NAPLAN or whatever, where you have to work out a formula for the base, given that this is a linear relationship. So the base will be 2, just 2 plus x, because it goes up by 4 when x goes up by 4. And then the height is going to be 1 plus, now this has just gone up by 1 when x has gone up by 4. So that'll be 1 plus x over 4. So we just got to plug in half base times height for the area.
And to evaluate this integral, we need to expand this. But what I might do is just, you've got this quarter here, which is going to make things messy. So I might actually bring that out. Um, so this will become an eighth, and let's bring that out the front. And then all of this will be multiplied by four. All right, now let's expand that. So the 2 times the 4 will be 8. You'll have a 2 times x and also that 4 times x, so that'll make 6x together. And then we've got an x squared. All right, so we just need to integrate each of these separately. So we get 8x. That's going to be 6x squared divided by 2, so 3x squared. And then x cubed over 3. Okay, and then you just need to plug in the 4 and the 0. You can do that on your calculator, uh, and it'll come out as 38 over 3. Part E. Okay, the way that I would do this is that I would think that if you take that vector, which is d minus a, and if you rotate that 90 degrees, then you'll get this one which is c minus d. Um, the reason I decided to use those two sides and not one of these is that there's no b in here. So we don't want to have a vector that's involving b. So we just want to say that this one is that one rotated by 90 degrees. So multiplying by i rotates by 90. So you can just say c minus d is i times d minus a. And then we can just expand this and move the d over to the right by adding it. So d plus i, d minus i, a, and then they've factorized that. And that's it. Okay, that's it for question 13. So let me know if there was anything that didn't make sense, and stay tuned because in the next video, I'm gonna be covering question 14.